Hello, I'm Bill Mobley, and this is Neurosciences Connections. It's a production of the Department of Neurosciences at UCSD. Very pleased to be here now with Al Espada, a new member of our faculty, who's come to us from the University of Washington. Al is nationally and internationally known for his contributions to understanding the genetics of disorders, especially nervous system disorders, and especially those disorders that are chronic and currently untreatable. So we're delighted to have you here, Al. We look forward to working with you. And, and please tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and, uh, and the plans you have for your time here at UCSD. So Bill, it's wonderful to be here with you today, to have this opportunity to discuss uh, my work and my background and um, to convey to you my excitement about the opportunities uh, that lie before us in terms of helping patients with uh, uh, motor neuron disease. Uh, in terms of my background, uh, I am from Philadelphia originally and I uh, attended the uh, University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. And I trained under Kurt Fishbeck, a colleague whom you know quite well, and as an MD-PhD student, I discovered a novel mutation uh, responsible for a, um, a motor neuron disease, a disease that affects the nerves that control our muscles and the way we move. And that discovery was significant um, because uh, what we learned is that uh, proteins that misfold cause damage to neurons and that this is a, a very uh, common uh, occurrence in a variety of neurological diseases ranging from Alzheimer's disease to Parkinson's disease uh, to Lou Gehrig's disease. Absolutely, and this is a major theme and I think people will have heard about this major theme but what you found was that a mutation in a gene predisposed to cause this problem with protein folding. By that you mean it should have a certain shape but it didn't have that shape right. and because of that uh, cells weren't healthy. That's right. Right. Yes, yeah, so this was a, a very important discovery because what we learned is that for whatever reason our nerve cells are exquisitely vulnerable um, to handling um, proteins that misfold. Um, the reasons for that remain unclear but we think that well, some of the reasons are that you know from when we're um, you know babies until we hopefully reach old age the nerve cells that we get are the nerve cells that we have for our entire lives mm -hmm. and so um, you know they need to sort of maintain protein quality control if you will and that's a constant challenge for them and this turns out to be uh, an important uh, issue for a variety of disorders. So in the work going forward, Al, how, how are you using the knowledge that you've uh, really built up over the years to help people with Lou Gehrig's disease? How's that working out now? So uh, as you know, Lou Gehrig's disease is a disorder that involves a certain type of nerve cell, uh, the so-called motor neurons. And uh, we study um, a few um, inherited disorders that uh, lead to problems with the motor neurons and what we're most interested in is understanding uh, how motor neurons normally work and what goes wrong in these diseases. Um, so we really want to understand what makes motor neurons tick and so um, by studying diseases where certain um, uh, mutant genes uh, lead the motor neurons uh, to go awry in terms of their function, we're trying to figure out um, how that happens. We're also trying to understand if there are certain pathways that keep motor neurons uh, functioning normally even in the face of stressful situations, whether it be problems with generating energy, problems with um, keeping proteins in, in their properly folded state, uh, or problems with them, um, you know, turning over proteins. And, and that's really what we're focusing our efforts on in the hope that if we can identify pathways that keep uh, motor neurons able to function under conditions of stress, we could prop up those pathways in patients and uh, retard the progression of, of the disease. So that's a great dream. Or how are we doing? Are we developing new knowledge and insights on a regular basis now? Is this, is this plan of action uh, panning out for us? Well, I think we're making great progress. I think the realization, you know, that this is, uh, that there are um, certain pathways that uh, are critically important to keep motor neurons healthy and certain pathways that are almost always uh, impinged upon in disease, you know, that's the first clue that perhaps we're, you know, sort of finally um, tapping into uh, information that uh, we'll be able to translate into meaningful therapies. Um, you know, I think that uh, uh, we have a lot of ideas in terms of how to go about this. I think that um, identifying key proteins that we think are involved in uh, motor neuron disease uh, 
is turning out to be very useful. And the idea that there are certain key proteins, such as TDP43, that we might target and simply reduce the expression of those proteins, uh, that this could be a way that we could uh, you know, treat these disorders, as I'm sure uh, you'll hear from uh, other people at our institution who are working on this. So I think we have some ideas now that um, we're bringing forward that could be useful to help patients with these diseases. Sounds very exciting and especially exciting because now you're with a team of folks here at UCSD that um, will complement and, uh, and uh, motivate and uh, hopefully uh, round out the work so that we'll have, a, we'll have better news for patients with motor and neuron disease in the future. Yeah, I think that's true. I think we actually have, <clears throat> we have a team of people here that really uh, you know, is unparalleled across the country. Um, we have uh, individuals like Don Cleveland and Larry Goldstein who are doing incredible uh, basic research. And as you know, we just recruited John Rabbits, a clinician who is a bridge between what's going on with the basic research and the clinical. So, uh, you know, I, I view it as sort of putting together, you know, a lineup like uh, for a baseball team. And I think that you know, we have all the positions covered uh, with people who are top-notch uh, at the top of their game. And I'm very excited about what we will accomplish going forward. Al, thank you very much. Uh, the next segment of Neuroscience Connections will uh, hear from that team, that all-star team in, in Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, we hope that you'll watch that segment as well. Thank you.